Hello guys, I'm going to show you guys how to make professional motor mounts for any car. This is my K24 Frank right here. And you can see previously I went to Lowe's and bought that weather stripping polyurethane. And it's pretty much garbage. You can see how nasty that looks. And it just it feels kind of loose. So it's been a few years and I'm going to take it up. Okay, and here we go. Oh, look how nasty that looks. Look at that. That is just terrible. It's cracking everywhere and it's uh, full of porosity. It's porous. There's a lot of holes in it. It's not real. It's not as firm as I wanted it to be. But this is the result you get when you. Yeah, this is the result you get when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and use that polyurethane weather stripping. It's just, it's just nasty. Okay, as you can see, I grinded it down right here flat. So when I lay this, here I'll show you. I got a piece of Lex in and I, I cut it out into a square. And what you're going to do is you're going to heat up this motor mount and pin right here and then you're going to lay the Lexan over and you're going to kind of you're going to melt this part through and then groove the whole outside so that it locks it in all everything in place okay I'll show you the next step okay here and I laid the Lexan over it like so it's on there and you just had to make sure that this ring around here was level with the plastic so yeah when you go to pour your urethane, it stays in there. I just got to push it down a little bit more, but that's how you do it so far. Okay, so I got this motor mount, and I got this micrometer right here. And I just laid, you can just lay something flat, because you can see how much the motor mount goes up right here. The pin, let's see. All right pin is 15.27 millimeters from the top right here and you're going to need that measurement when you put everything back together all right now it's time to torch the bearing out or, oh why did i say bearing no i meant the motor mount pin for the bolt we have to burn that out and then we're going to clean everything out Okay guys, here's the motor mount all set up. This right here, I used a lid off of a, a liter bottle of crystal geyser, I believe. It was sparkling water. And I just cut it because, if you can see, this I filled with water just to make sure it was waterproof. But you have to set this up and you have to silicone around the edges. And then silicone around the Lexan, the plexiglass. And... I filled everything and mocked everything up. And now you just have to get a pipette and suck out the liquid so you can measure the volume. So once you do that, you can suck all the liquid out, measure the volume, and then you can put your polyurethane. You'll know exactly how much polyurethane to use which will be, I'll probably use 10%, about 10% more polyurethane because there's going to be some stuck in inside the the mixing container. That way everything will be perfect. But the reason I did it like this is because, let me try to get the right level, is because the actual, like, this is a complicated motor mount. It's, it's not like a normal motor mount. This right here, the, the liquid actually has to go above this motor mount um, pin right here because the let me see. yeah okay yeah because it, it can't just extend up here on the motor mount because you'll have half the pin sticking out right here and it'll cause it to flex so you want to use this thing right here to fill it up as much as you can up to the pin I'll probably add up alright but yeah like I was saying um, this right here I'm going to measure the volume so just take a little uh, like that 
like this, a pipe back, and just take the water out and just put it in a bottle. That way you'll know how much polyurethane to use. The poly I'll show you um, next what polyurethane I use and which dye I use. So, and the reason why I'm doing it like this is because the polyurethane dries up fast and I don't want to um, use an excess amount. I can just use exactly what I need so I can do all my mounts. And as far as these mounts go, I wouldn't recommend. I'd, it's it's better just to buy the mounts if you can, but if their motor mounts are either hard to get or they're custom, then this is the only way to do it. Alright, so I'll show you in the next bid um, what you're going to need to buy. Alright, so we got everything set up here. This is how it looks. this at the dollar store to mix my urethane in and then I got this right here Vita Flex 60A shore hardness and then I bought this uh, Aluma dye for the polyurethane I think it was like eight eight bucks for this yeah Aluma light and I measured out my volume of liquid here, which came out to, um, I think it was like 300 milliliters. And then all you do, since, because this right here you mix at a 1 to 1 ratio, you just divide the 300 ml by 2, so you mix 150 ml of each. And I'm not going to record me pouring it because it's, it's just going to be too hard, but I'll show you the result after. Alright guys, it's poured and you can see, I can't move it because it's like liquid, but yeah, that's how it's going to dry. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, um, as a releasing agent, you coat what you don't want to stick with, a turtle wax. So you don't have to go out there and buy anything expensive. I, I had some in the garage, turtle, turtle wax is like huge containers at three bucks at Walmart. Okay, well, let's let it cure for 16 hours and then that's not the last step. After 16 hours of cure, I'll show you what you're gonna have to do next. Otherwise, um, it's still not gonna be fully cured. Okay guys, and here is the final result. It doesn't it doesn't get any more professional than this at home. Look how nice that looks. Look at this. This is just sexy, sexy, sexy. Look at that. And look at that. That is just beautiful. Look at that. It doesn't, you can't, you can't get more professional than that at home. You just can't. Look at this thing. This thing is just a sexy beast. Alright. But I'll tell you the step that I'm not going to show on the video, but what you do. This rubber right here, when you, after it dries, um, it's still tacky at about 15 hours. But at 16 hours... It's it's real soft. It's it's as soft as a pencil eraser, and this is the step where people mess up the most. Is the final step on the curing process. Like it, a lot of people on YouTube won't tell you how to cure it, but what you do is you have to cure it at at least 150 degrees for six to eight hours. I put mine at 170 degrees in the oven for about six hours. And when you push on this rubber right here, before it was, it felt like a pencil eraser. I wasn't real happy with it, and that's why people are complaining, going, "Oh, um, my, my rubber, it, it's, it feels too soft for 60." Nope, this is hard as hell. Like it's, it's hard. It's really hard. But it's not like that until you actually cure it. And I don't know why people don't talk about curing it and that's what you need to do you have to you have to cure this for at least six hours at 150 degrees like I said I use 170 and 
it came out absolutely flawless, perfect. Um, I don't like to pat myself on the back too much, but this for a homemade mount turned out better than than what I've seen on YouTube. I mean, who wants a nasty, gunky rubber mount when you can have something like this? I mean, I did I did paint it to give it that because. Um, I had some rust showing through in a couple spots, so I just I just painted it with some Rust-Oleum flat black. That's what I used. But I'm gonna install it in the car, and I'll show you guys how it works. Thanks. Okay, guys, and here it is installed. Yeah, no crackhead stuff here. Okay, now we're gonna go for a drive. 